What's up everybody? It is your boy JB and I'm coming here tonight with a review for um this is Claws season three episode three and the episode was titled Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Now you might be here you might hear some thunder and rain. It is currently raining here in Dallas, Texas. I don't know what is going on with Dallas for the last three weeks I think we've gotten rain on a Sunday. So if you guys hear a lot of loud if you hear that, just let you know it's raining here and so Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, guys. So this episode, in open, we see you know Desna. I get I don't know whose house she was at. I think she might have been at um you know Jen's house because the girls were there, and somebody threw some food at her. And she's like, "If you don't whoop that Jen, if you don't whoop their asses, I'm gonna whoop their asses for you." So then you know she's talking to Rolla, and you know she's like, "You know I can't be living like this. Like I gotta find my own place." And you know, uh, Rolla was like, "What well, shit? I told you, let's find one together." She's like, "Rolla, I don't want to live with you. Like, it's good what we do. We fuck. We go about our business. That's about it right now. Like, we don't need to complicate it in no way, shape, form, or fashion." So then we do see a scene where Desna is talking to her. Um, I think the girl from season one, Mandy. I think that was Mandy, right? Mandy or Mindy, whatever her name is. And you know, she's talking about you know Desna talking about what she wants in a place. She said she wants she wants somewhere nice to live, but she cannot be the only black person there. She's like, what about the doorman? She's like, girl, that is not the same. I'm, I'm thinking myself like, bitch, really? The fucking doorman? The doorman? Like, bitch, she means somebody that lives there. Like, the doorman. Like, girl, fuck out of here. The fucking doorman. The fucking doorman. The fucking doorman. Alright, so then we see uh, Jen and Bryce. Jen and Bryce are seeking legal advice. And they're seeking legal advice about, you know, their case with EJ in regards to bringing in. So then the lawyer's looking like, he's like, God damn, y'all been arrested for this and this and that? Shit. Does it say crack? When he said crack, I died laughing. But he tells them that, you know, when it comes down to soul custody, I guess because of both their past and the fact that, uh, girl, what the fuck does Alexis Scott have on her head? That wig is ugly. Watching the BT Awards. Um, so yeah. What was I saying? I lost my train. Oh, so yeah, the lawyer was telling them, you know, the fact that they have a record and also the fact that, you know, EJ has been in prison. EJ does not have a case for sole custody, but he could go for, you know, he could deal with joint custody. And then a lawyer was asking him, do you want to fight? Well, Jen wants to fight. But Bryce is like, and eh, not so much. And, you know, Bryce is like, how would you... I, he was, Bryce put himself in, um... In, um... What is... Oh, boy, EJ's shoes. Because he was like, what, what would happen if you were to say that I couldn't see our daughter? You know, uh, not their daughter, but... There's a thunder. But he was like, what if you said that we couldn't see... I couldn't see, um, Brienne myself? So, you know, Bryce is just like, you know, I think we, Rihanna, look at my boo. Bryce is just like, you know, um, what was Bryce saying? Oh, Bryce is just advocating for him. And, you know, um, Jen is like, I know you fucking lying. Like, you advocating for this motherfucker? So the lawyer left, and that's when he just went into detail about why he felt the way he felt. He was, you know, he just wants her to get to know her dad. And I thought that was, I'm like, okay, Bryce. See a little bit of a change in you. Like I, I'm like I, I'm, I, I'm liking that, and I understand. I, I'm glad that somebody is the voice of reason. He hasn't really, you know, EJ hasn't done anything wrong at this point. He just wants to be in his daughter's life, and the fact that Jen was being a bitch last week to him, he did what he had to do. So it is what it is. It really is what it is. Like I don't feel no type of way. I, I don't hate Bryce for what he did, and I definitely didn't hate uh, EJ for what he did. I think what what fucked uh, Bryce up was the fact that you know. Uh, you know the fact that Bryce put himself in that position to let um, you know EJ go to him so you know it is it basically really like I said it is what it is alright so next we see Polly your crazy ass and you know she's in the office and she's talking with Joe um, you know Mac and Melba's uh, accountant and hey she's just going over business with him about what they can do and then you know they um, Joe gets a call from somebody and he has to go on the floor and deal and deal with somebody at a, I guess a blackjack table or something that's either drunk and falling out their seat or something like that. I, I really want to understand what was going on. So he does leave. So then once he leaves, a phone call comes in and Polly answers the phone and she pretends like she's Joe. 
and you know the person talking about a delivery or something and then they talking about a party that the governor is having and she's like oh okay but also um i do want to mention that um joe was like he wants to see who the real poly was and um so the governor is actually having a fundraiser a fundraiser now and i use that term i use the term fundraiser very fucking loosely loose as fuck looser than a loose leaf sheet of paper so um so then you know uh polly calls desna and some of these young ass kids don't know nothing about no damn mary j blush that is so fucking crazy i'm gonna talk about that in my bt review but uh on instagram yesterday on ig so you know they doing they, i think they did the nba draft and some of the kids they showed them a picture of like destiny's child and outcast and they none of them know who either one of them were or tia tamira i'm like god damn am i that fucking old that i know outcast destiny's child tia tamira like i feel old as shit i really do you know just looking at these young kids today and i'm gonna talk about the, with the bt awards because some of the performances that i want to talk about but we're just gonna go back to claws real quick uh so then roller shows up and you know roller is trying to get help with uh from polly about how to deal with desna you know she's like so you want to be like michelle you know, is this barack and michelle type of relationship or is this like um what was the other couple that she said i forgot what other couple she said but you know he said i don't even know what that means but basically roller wants to take things seriously with desna and um so then we see polly you know she she looked like Rhea, Rhea Perlman from um, Cheers with that hair poofed up and that outfit on. She, she looked like Rhea Perlman to me. Um, so then we see the girls. they at the um, the nail shop. And, you know, they tell them Desna how bougie she is. And then as they enter the nail shop, who do they see in the nail shop? None other than a dead Penelope. And I'm like, God damn, that's morbid as fuck. Y'all just left the bitch in the chair with, and then they put the thing on her feet after you get your pedicure done. I'm like, really? Really? Why does Bobby Lights look like a pink flamingo? Okay. I'm uh, I'm getting distracted by this. The BT Awards. I'm trying not to. So, um... So now they're trying to figure out, like, what the fuck do we do about this dead, this dead woman sitting right here in front of us? So, you know, um, as they're getting ready to, you know, they got the body, you know, and they're getting ready to take it out. And as they get ready to take it out, they notice that Arlene is fucking looking at them. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, Ann, go take care of your motherfucking girlfriend. Like, check check that bitch. So, you know, Ann goes out there. Arlene is trying to figure out what's going on between she and Ann. And Ann is like trying to, you know, turn her off, get her away to leave so that, they, you know, they can get rid of Penelope's body. And, uh... So then, you know, we see uh, Desna, you know, they put her, in the, they put Penelope in the back of Ann's van. And then, you know, um, Desna tells, you know, Jen, Virginia, and Ann to, to clean the shop up. Clean it up. Once you clean it up, open up for business as usual. I'm like, after a dead woman was just sitting there in a dead, in a seat, like, really? I'm like, that's what we're doing? Okay. Gotcha. Um... So then we we see where uh we see her Desna she goes to this place I, I don't know where she went to I don't know if that was a morgue or what and you know she's telling she she meets with Polly who has a friend there that takes the body and you know she pays off she's like girl I ain't saw shit my name is my name is I don't know what we good on that and I'm like well fuck oh Penelope rest in peace to Penelope rest in peace to Penelope. All right, so then we got Uncle Daddy at the rehab clinic. Well, that bitch is empty as fuck because nobody really wants rehabilitation. Those motherfuckers just want what? Their drugs. Nothing but their drugs. So then Toby comes in. He tells Uncle Daddy and Bryce, I know where they went to. I forgot what he said the name of the place was, but he said he know where they went to. So they're like, well, guess what? We about to make a trip over there to get our druggies back. So, you know, they do go over there. And like I said, all those drug addicts want is drugs. And they tell my dad, like, fuck you. If you ain't giving us drugs, they giving us drugs. If you ain't giving us drugs, all you trying to do is help us? Like, motherfucker, we don't want to be helped. Give me what I came here for. I want some oxycodone, oh, oxycodone some hydrocodone, some Vicodin, 
whatever else you got morphine like i want some I, I want all of that and more give me my opioids so then you know bryce is like you know what i got an idea why don't we say we have half price drugs to lure them in and then once we get them in boom hit them with the you're here for rehab we're gonna get you clean we're gonna get you sober and we're gonna get you back on that street not to do drugs but to live a productive life I'm gonna shut up. Um, so then we get them back. They got them at the clinic, and they like, you know, so you know, they giving their whole spill about what's gonna happen. They're like, "What if the gov? What if the state has suspended my license? I can't do shit." And then they were like, "Wait a minute! First of all, I think you lured us here under false pretenses." Actually, the girl said false pretenses. I'm like, "Nah, baby, it's false pretenses." And she was like, "You know, you said half price drugs. Where the fuck are my half price drugs?" Like I said. Motherfuckers only want drugs, so they said, "Bitch, fuck you. We out. We're going back to the clinic that gives us the drugs. You can kiss my ass on the way out. How about that? Like hills built dead. So then, the last one of the last few scenes in the episode, we see at the clinic Uncle Daddy and Bryce they talking, and then who walks in but none other than Jen's crackhead ass mama. And Bryce like, "Oh shit, bitch, where you come from? We ain't saw you since you since she was on your knees sucking my dick." Like, god damn. Uh oh, she hitting the Mary. Go, Mary. Go, Mary. Hey, go, Mary. I'm sorry, y'all. This is distracting. I'm, try I'm, 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 I'm getting back to it. But, you know, basically, Uncle Daddy's like, you know what? Bryce, shut the fuck up. We're going to help the old bitch out. I'm like, really? You gonna help the bitch that almost broke up your 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 nephew son's marriage by giving him head? Okay. Okay, y'all. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm trying to. Mary was giving. A, Mary is giving a concert on this fucking BT Awards. Like, get it, Mary. But um. So then we see Desna. So she's with Polly and, you know, she's trying to figure out, like, what are we going to do? Like, what's next for us? So then she's like, you know what? We're about to go to this party that, you know, um, the governor is having. And we're going to figure out what the governor is up to. So, you know, we see Mac and Melba. They are in their office. And we see on the security footage that there is a guy with, a, with some flowers. And he's going to, um, you know, their office to deliver the flowers to them. And, um... Um, what was it? Uh, so he's delivering the flowers. So Mac and Melba, we get the we get the bouquet of flowers, and it has an, it has a note in there, and the note says, um, you know, we know how much I know how much Penelope meant to you guys. Sorry for your loss, Desna. And Melba's like, you bitch, to kill her or to not kill her, to kill her, not kill her, bitch. Take a puff of motherfucking oxygen and shut the fuck up. Like Melba gets on my fucking nerves. Like you mad man Melba? Oh, you big mad. You big mad. You big mad. So then you know we see um Mac, he's in the casino, and Dean is there. So then he goes up to uh Dean and he's trying to introduce himself to him. I'm like, whoa, back slow your roll, brother. Back the fuck up, leave him alone. You can see that he's not, you know, he's not all the way there. You know, his he's he's a, he's a smart person, but you can see that he is a little challenged. I don't, you know, so he's special needs. Put it that, that's a, that's the a correct term. He's special needs, and you gonna go up to him and try to befriend him. And Desna walks out there, and she's like, "Oh fuck to the no, back your motherfucking ass up away from my brother." And she was like, "Dean, I want you to stay away from him. He is dangerous." And I don't think Dean is really grasping the fact that she's, you know what? And I know why he's not grasping the fact that she, he's dangerous, because it's the same thing with Mel, not Mel, but it's the same thing with um Zlata. You know, she tells Dean that people are dangerous, but she still does business with them. And he's like, how can you do business with people that you're telling me are dangerous? Like, you want me to stay away from them, but then you are in business with them? Like, how does that work? So I definitely get where Dean is coming from, but I also get where Desna's coming from. She's worried about him because he's too trusting in people, and that could be a downfall later on down the line. So I definitely get where she's coming from with that. So then they head to this fundraiser. So once they get to the fundraiser, you know, they tell them, they tell them, you know, they leave their cell phones at the front 
I'm like, okay, interesting. Then they give a mask, and it's like, a, so I'm like, okay, so this is a masquerade ball. Okay, I'm with it. I like a good masquerade ball. So then they walk into the masquerade ball. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I'm like, it's that kind of party. Because you see a little person, and then you see people just kissing all on, t- on each other, filling all up on each other. I'm like, oh, so this is a freak party. This is an S&M party because you see the whips. Then I saw a pig. I'm like, wait a minute. What kind of bestiality shit is this? Like, uh, no. So then we see the girls, you know, in order to kind of get to where they want to get to, they got to, you know, play the part. So then they, uh, so then they, um, they change it to some sexier clothing. So then, you know, um, and this is in order to meet Trip, who's the governor. So then they, um, they see this one girl and she's talking about she's meeting up with Trip to do some business with him. And they're like, oh, okay, bitch. You think you're going to meet up with Trip? We got you. So they handcuff the bitch to the, the chair and they lock her up. So then, um, you know, once I get into the once I get into the party where everything is at, they see Mac and Melba is hosting, and they're like, "Of course, these freaks would be hosting this shit." So then, uh, you know, they see Polly in the audience. Well, they don't they don't necessarily see Polly. They're looking for a sacrifice, and they pick Polly, and you know, she goes up on the stage, and it looks like they're gonna you know sever her head, and she's like, "Joe, it's me, Polly," and then he goes to let it down, but then. A, a, a curtain falls and comes up and we see a woman straddling a man I'm like what the fuck kind of party is this like what the fuck so then you know they they um passing out uh they passing out champagne and I noticed I'm like wait a minute they just spiked their champagne with drugs I'm, I'm like was that cocaine that they just put in the <laughs> oh excuse me y'all I'm like was that sh- there was that you know co- cocaine that they just literally put in that uh fucking champagne like and then they took the champagne well everybody took the champagne with the exception of Desmond Desmond was like I'm good a severe thunderstorm warning an EAS participant has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for the following Texas counties Colin <laughs> Denton Tarrant Dallas effective until June 23rd at 10 16 p.m. What the fuck? It's been three weeks that it's been. It has been three weeks of bad weather on a Sunday here in Texas. In Dallas. Shit. I'm going to let that play out. Oh, knock out the power of my job. Oh, knock out the power of my job. Time to go to work tomorrow, please. That's all I need you to do. All I need you to do is just knock out the power at my job. Because I don't want to go to work tomorrow. I forgot where the fuck I was. And nickel size. Ugh. Nickel size hell. Ugh. Oh, that's big. Especially for hell. All right, so I'm sorry, but guys, told you, weather is bad here in Dallas. I don't know what's been going on for the last three weeks on a Sunday. We've had bad weather. Um, So back to the show. So the girls, they are high as hell, and they forget what the mission is. We see Quiet Ann. She's with a guy. Uh, We see Polly. She's with the, you know, with Joe. So then we see Desna, she's with the governor, and he's telling her that he's giving the contract to go touch. And then he pulls out a taser, and I'm like, whoa, 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 what the fuck is going on here? So like I said, we saw in with a guy, and she was, you know, asking the guy about his dealings with Mac and Melba, and his microphone is in my fucking nerves. So he's at, she was asking him about his dealings with Mac and Melba, and, uh, you know, he was like, 
why do you keep calling me? Because then we saw her and she was pacing Arlene. And he was like, why do you keep calling me Arlene? And I'm like, because the bitch is high as fuck, his wife. Then we see uh, Polly. You know, she's, she's trying to show uh, uh, Joe to reel her. And then Virginia gets her ass kicked out of the party. I'm like, what the fuck did Virginia do? And then they, I guess they threw the pig out too. And then the pig, you know, Virginia's dead high that the pig was talking to. I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck? What the fuck? Um. So then, um, you know, once is once they are finished, and you know, we see them with uh with Desna, and Desna's telling him like, "Yo, I know what the government is doing. He's building private prisons, and Mac and Melba are taking a cut from that." I'm like, "Oh, you want to lock up more black and brown people, huh?" Okay, bitch. Fuck y'all too. Especially that wheezing bitch Melba, wheezing ass bitch. Weezing ass bitch. So then the next day we see them at the salon and they talking about the party. They really technically don't remember anything because again they were all motherfucking what? Higher than kites. But you know, uh Virginia was like, girl, something is off about your sexual or like you've been with a man. And they were like, you know, they were like, girl, your powers again your powers you, you telling you that? Doesn't like girl, you ain't got no fucking she ain't got no fucking powers and you know uh you know, quiet in is like, well, She's not lying because I was with a man last night. She was like, somebody said, I knew I smelled cock. And, you know, Pop, Pop was like, he had a penis? Yes, Polly, he had a penis and not a rubber penis. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but she tells him that she was thinking about Arlene the whole time. And then, you know, quite, uh, Desna gives us some advice. And Jen's like, well, bitch, look, well, pot, meat, kettle. She was like, girl, shut the fuck up. Me and Rolla, me and Rolla are not in love with each other, but we are going on a date tonight. And like, oh, a date with Rolla? I see you, bitch. I see you. Okay, so then we see um, Jen. She's in a park with Brienne. And she's talking to Brienne about me and her daddy. She's like, black daddy. She's like, yeah, black daddy. So she asked her, do you want to meet him? And she was like, mm, okay, I guess so. I mean, if that's what you want me to say, I'll meet him. So then we see Virginia, she was getting some food, and EJ walks up to her. He's like, you getting some cold food? She's like, yes, I like my food cold. Is there a problem with me liking my food cold? And I think he was flirting with her, but I wasn't really quite 100% positive. But, you know, I wasn't sure if he was flirting with Virginia or if he knew who Virginia was. So I, I was a little confused about that scene right there. So then we see where, um, you know, um, um, Jen and Bryce are taking Brienne to meet EJ and she's a little afraid and apprehensive about meeting him but then Bryce just has a conversation with her and you know he calms her down and then EJ shows up to meet her and he has a black dolly for it and then they just go off and you know play I'm like oh that was cute and I was so happy that um, you know I'm so happy that Bryce had that conversation with Jen earlier in the episode about her Letting him, you know, have contact with his daughter because it's it's needed. Like I'm happy for her, so you know, we just gonna keep it moving with that one, cause that was a cute scene. All right, you guys. So then we're just gonna talk about the last few things in the episode. So we see Roller. He wanted to, he went to the uh, the casino to take Desna out on a date. Desna told him like. And I can't really go tonight because I'm going to this event that, you know, Mac and Melba are hosting. But come take me out tomorrow and I got you. So then we see, um, you know, Desna, she was talking to um, Mac and Melba. And she tells them, she's sitting in the office. She's like, oh, I forgot to put my name on the office. She's like, I'm taking over this bitch now. If y'all got a problem with it, kiss my motherfucking ass. Oh, I also know about the, you know, the governor and his prisons, you know, his, his prisons that he's building. And, you know, I want y'all to know that um, if anything is to happen to me, like, I will go and tell the FBI, the feds, whoever I got to tell. And also, if anybody, anything, anything happens to the people that I love, the media will know about this. Like, they were like, you would really, you know, put your own business in jeopardy. She's like, try me if you want, bitch. Try me if you want to. Um, so then we see Anne, and, you know, she's talking to um, Arlene. And, you know, she's talking about, uh, and she's talking about, uh, um, you know, them being together, how, for, you know, how they, how their relationship is built on lies. They don't tell each other about their businesses, but now she wants to. 
and she tells her that um what did she tell her she's like oh she's oh she started she slept with a man she's like how was it she said i'm here right now so it didn't go that well um and then you know we see um dean you know uh desmond takes him him and virginia to her new place and she's like y'all can go get y'all stuff and move in tonight well dean is like i'm not moving in here with you i don't want to live with you i'm my own man and you know virginia's like well i would prefer to live here and Dean's like virginia let's go i'm like well damn Dean, you ain't gotta be like that to her i'm like damn you ain't gotta be like that to the girl but um you know so i guess they're not gonna live with virginia with uh with uh so eh, whatever um so then we see um you know we see Roller. Roller's at a gas station and Roller's leaving the gas station and then there's a woman asking him for help. I'm like, Roller, don't fall for that shit. That bitch is finna, finna do something to you. And lo and behold, the bitch chloroformed him. I'm like, oh my God, he fell for that shit. Like, I don't want expect him for Roller to fall for that. But you guys, that was um, the episode. Like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys later. I'm going to be reviewing the BET Awards. I think this is about to go up pretty soon, but I'm going to review it. I'm going to have to go back to the hour that I just missed with Claw. So until I see you, until next time, you guys, later.